Joe with Cactus Hat Mushrooms, and today we go over the barrel steamer and why you need to use it instead of the sauna steamer. Pasteurizing large amounts of substrate is one of the main bottlenecks in the mushroom game. We all start out with regular old Presto 23 quart pressure cookers, or if you have the extra cash, an all American sterilizer. But as your farm grows, quickly you realize those units cannot keep up with the demand. You need to use something called atmospheric sterilization. And in previous videos, I went over the sauna steamer and why I don't think it's a good choice. Instead, I recommend a barrel steamer that you can construct yourself for a very low cost and you could do about a ton of substrate every run. And it really is as simple just as getting a 30 gallon barrel with some heating elements and a float valve. That's it, no big secret. That being said, Let's go over the details. Inside your barrel, you have a stainless steel float valve and two heating elements. I chose two because I wanted more power. I wanted my trough to heat up faster. I wanted my runs to be shorter. I have to make a lot of blocks and I need to do it now and quickly. And here's a close up of the two elements. Each one is 5,500 watts and it's one and a half inch NPT holes that you drill for these. I've used sanitary fittings. Some people call them brewer's fittings. It really was as easy as pushing this against the well, this bulkhead fitting, and screwing them together with this. And if one ever breaks, I could just unscrew it, pull it out, and put in a new one. Very simple. Now that we talked about the two heating elements, let's talk about the stainless steel float valve, and why you're going to want to use a braided line on the intake of it. As you can imagine, this line is going to get very hot since it's in contact with the barrel. If you connected your garden hose directly to the barrel, you'd probably melt it. And then you're going to run out of water and burn out your elements. And here's a close-up of the intake for your float valve. As you can see, I just used several different garden hose adapters to make it work. Very simple. At the very beginning, it started leaking a little bit. And it rusted the outside of it a little bit because it's not a stainless steel barrel. But we'll talk more on that later. And the other end of the intake just attaches to a garden hose. I believe I got this in the washing machine section of a big box store. You can find a million of them. I just got this one and it fit the garden hose perfect. Something else of note, you're going to want a pressure reducer valve. and You're going to set it to about 15 to 20 PSI. If you don't do this, sometimes people's water pressure is so high it pushes right through the float valve. And you're going to have a barrel that just overflows and is never able to heat up. And boy is that going to make a mess if that's in a garage or even your home. Here's the secret sauce that makes this barrel steamer easy to construct and why I feel everybody should do it. These brewer's fittings have made life easy for all of us. This is a weldless bulkhead fitting. It measures one and a half inch NPT. So you'll get a drill bit, drill your one and a half inch NPT hole where you want your outlet, and you're going to put in this weldless bulkhead fitting. It just slides right in and screws in on the other side. Here's a view. Wow. Once you get your drill bit, you could even put one in your trough. And I'll show you how easy it is to connect the outlet pipe to it. Here's a side view and how I connect my outlet hose to it. This is how all these sanitary fittings work. They simply press together like so. And then you use a tri-clamp to keep them together. Just like this. And then you tighten this down and it squeezes the two connections together. That's it. You walk away and move on with your life. Now just connect the other end to your trough or your barrel or whatever you're sterilizing in. Even your drain is weldless. They really have made everything much easier. Now I'm not going to talk too much about cook times and all that because there's plenty of info on that out there already. But if you really want to know, just mention it in the comments and I'll get around to answering it. But it's readily available. But I do want to talk about the barrel and the placement of elements and the intake and the drain and how it's important, and some things I would have did differently. The first thing I would have did differently was move this intake over to the side more and farther away from these elements. You can only imagine why. I almost had water dripping on the elements. What a mistake. In a perfect world, I also would have lined up those elements a little better. I would have tried to have them directly across from each other and weaving into each other. As you can see, these elements come bent and do indeed weave into each other. But I figured just putting one on top of the other would be easy to replace. And in the end, I guess it really didn't matter. The thing heats up so fast anyways when you have 11,000 watts flowing through it. 
if I were able to put those elements across from each other, I'd be able to keep the water level lower, which would mean that the water would heat up faster and produce steam faster. But in the end, I find it didn't really matter. Instead of 5 minutes to produce steam, it just takes 15. I don't really care about the difference in that time. I also would have found a different drain. No matter how I adjust this thing, it always seems to leak a little bit. I would have went with another weldless bulkhead fitting and found just a different type of drain, maybe a different brand, I don't know, but it has a steady drip. And I stopped caring about it anyways, because I have this set up outdoors. And finally, the barrel itself. If I had the extra money, I would have definitely went stainless steel. But with a budget, there's nothing wrong with using one of these barrels, just expect it to break down faster over time. And of course, like I mentioned in the sauna steamer videos, you're going to want to drain this after every run. Look at all that sediment in there. That's what breaks down your elements. But another beauty of this setup is you could pull the elements out and clean them down if you really wanted to. I personally don't care because they're each only about $50, and I'll just replace it when it finally breaks. Once I fill up the barrel with water and turn on the elements, I just put the lid on and put a weight on it. I got this from Oak and Spore. That channel is great, and you should check it out. These elements run off a of 220, so you're going to want two different dedicated lines to each element if you're running two in your steamer barrel. As you can see, I have these very large plugs, and I'll link all of this in the bottom so you know what to get. And make sure you have an electrician wire this. They actually know what they're doing, and I don't want you to hurt yourself. Now this barrel steamer was modeled after Eric Meyer's barrel steamer that he produces through Bubba's Barrels. And if you have a lot of cash just sitting around, and you don't want to deal with this, Go buy one. But honestly, this project was so simple, and I'm not even good with my hands, that I was able to do it. And I think you can too. And honestly, you could keep the cost down even cheaper if you use a 55-gallon barrel. And hey, those are like $10 on Facebook Marketplace. The one I paid for was like $150, brand new. And finally, something of note before I show some B-roll and show this barrel in action. You're going to want to insulate your drums, especially if you're in a region where it's cold. I'm in Tampa, so even when it's cold, it's hot. So I can get away with not insulating it like you saw in this video, but I just haven't got around to it. When I insulate it, I'm going to be using K-Flex. I got this from Oak and Spore, and it seems to hold up well on his barrel steamer, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. So if you want to be able to pasteurize large amounts of substrate, like all the small commercial farms you see on YouTube, you're going to want to get yourself a barrel steamer just like this. And after you set this up, you only use your pressure canners for agar and spawn and maybe sterilizing equipment. And if you're anything like me, you're about to make way too many mushrooms after your first couple of runs just from the excitement of being able to do it. B-roll! <laughs>